I think if you grow up in Clareton, it's a different kind of culture. So I'm going down River Road down here, and I see what the kids are like, look, a cloud maker. It ain't a cloud maker, it's just this, this purge oven, I guess you want to call it. We knew that we really shouldn't be eating the catfish out of the river because the rivers were, you know, comparatively speaking, pretty polluted. People that have been here since the 50s and 60s that used to see the sky dark at noontime think that, you know, it can't get any better than this. Coke works are one of the dirtiest processes and we happen to have the largest coke works uh, in the country. When you think about the Mon Valley, you think about Pittsburgh, you think about steel. Two principal ingredients of making steel, iron ore and coal. You need coke, and the way you make coke is by taking coal, processing it, baking it, okay? That's coke. So the coal releases all the chemicals that are in coal. So you'll get ammonias and sulfurs and a whole bunch of other products. There are dozens and dozens of chemical byproducts that are stripped out of the coke oven gas and then sold separately. So this isn't just a coke making facility, it's actually a chemical plant as well. I find it necessary to tie handkerchiefs over the children's mouth in some futile attempt to block out some of these pollutants. Even though I know the sulfur dioxide can't be filtered. And when I send them out into this air, I feel like, just like a murderess. I close the door behind me and I think, it's handkerchiefs today, what will it be tomorrow? Well, growing up, I understand that that was back in the 60s and 70s, and that predated the creation of the modern environmental movement, the modern conservation movement. There was no Department of Environmental Protection. There was no Earth Day, okay? There was no Silent Spring written. With that advent of the modern environmental movement, you saw a recognition that what we spew into our air and dump into our waterways does eventually affect our health. And I think last year we had 12 football players with asthma, and I think we only had 30 players on the team, so almost half had some form of asthma. Swimming pools are pointless. I stopped using my swimming pool two months ago, because so I was vacuuming it every other day with black soot all over the bottom of the swimming pool. It's horrible. In the 60s and 70s, there was nothing green here. Nothing. Nothing, okay? Now, you can go deer hunting up here. I was talking to some of the students and the parents a couple of days ago, and we were talking about pollution control. And the parents are really afraid of it because they say as long as there's smoke coming out of the smokestacks, then there's food on the table and money and clothes for the kids and the fathers are working. Well, I had a father, and he died five years ago, and he worked in a steel mill all his life and he died of a heart attack and I'm just wondering if that's not why because of the pollution. So we had this tremendous you know economic dislocation that was not caused at all by the advent of the Environmental Protection Agency and the laws and the regulations. This happened because in the 1960s and early 70s there was a conscious decision by steelmakers in this country that they were going to invest in the new technology of steel making, either down south or offshore. After 15 months of hearings, the Variance and Appeals Board made this landmark decision. It denounced the U.S. Steel Corporation for its waging a kind of blackmail, using the threat of unemployment to intimidate workers and public officials. It ruled that U.S. Steel be taken to court and made to clean up its pollution. The people of Lincoln Borough, Pittsburgh, and towns up and down the Monongahela River now know they don't have to hold their breath. Well, we're currently standing on the rooftop of the Air Quality Program's um, offices in, our, in Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania. 
Uh, the rooftop here serves as our main urban monitoring site, and you can see the instruments uh, that we have deployed. We currently have uh, 25 monitoring sites scattered across Allegheny County monitoring 60 different pollutants at all of those sites. Besides the fact that the process is dirty, the plant sits in a river valley which is prone to what are called temperature inversions. And these temperature inversions tend to trap the pollution is there. So if this plant were anywhere else except sitting in that valley, it wouldn't be anywhere near the problem that it is. In a few minutes, we'll formally commission our plant's newest Coke battery, the C battery, and the first of three new low emission quench towers. The battery and the quench tower, as well as the environmentally focused rehabilitation work we've done on batteries one through three, represent an investment of more than $500 million by our company. Uh, this is the single largest facility investment project in this plant's nearly 112 year history and one of the largest investment programs in our company's 112 year history. You know, we want to keep good family paying jobs and we want to clean up our environment too, okay, because that's good for us. Uh, it's good for us in the short term, it's good for us in the long term. It's not an either or choice. You got to deal with both. There will always be a, uh, a, a constant uh, trade-off in terms of how much pollution reduction is necessary versus the controls on how much uh, facilities can afford to, uh, to put on those controls. However, what we've seen as time has gone on that we can have both. We can have acceptable air. We can have perfectly clean air, but we can have acceptable air. Mm -hmm.